Hi, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Form completion questions are one of the easiest types of IELTS listening questions to answer, as long as you know how to recognise and write the vocabulary they typically contain. You also need a good strategy to follow. I cover all this and many valuable tips in this lesson. The lesson includes question types, sample questions, strategy and tips, vocabulary, a practice question and the answers. Form completion questions are especially common in section one of the test and the recording will often be a telephone conversation between two people. The two most common types of form you'll see are an application form or an order or quotation form. Here are examples of both to show you what your question might look like. The recording for the application form question is a telephone conversation between the Youth Council Administrator and a young man who wants to apply for election to the Youth Council. The recording for the quotation form question is a telephone conversation between a customer and an agent at a company which ships large boxes overseas. I'm going to use this second example to teach you the answer strategy and give you tips and advice on how to overcome the challenges presented by this type of question. You'll have a short time to prepare before the speakers begin talking. Use this time to familiarise yourself with the question and focus your mind on what you need to listen out for. First, read the instructions carefully, paying particular attention to how many words you're allowed to write for the answer. The instructions for our sample question state that you must write no more than three words and or a number for each answer. If you write more than three words, your answer will be marked incorrect, even if the information you give is correct. Don't lose marks over silly mistakes like this. Next, look for a title. Not every question will have one, but if there is one, it will tell you the context of the question. Our sample question has a title, Packham's Shipping Agency, Customer Quotation Form. Knowing the context gives meaning to the information in the notes. This will help you to understand the question and give you a big clue as to what sort of information will be contained in the recording. The next task is to try to predict what the answers might be. This will focus your mind on what to listen out for in the recording. Occasionally you'll be able to predict the actual word, but mostly it's one of these things that you'll be able to determine. The type of information required, for example a surname, place name, date, phone number, postcode, percentage or price. Or the type of word required, such as a noun, adjective or verb. The answers to form completion questions will usually be factual information, such as that listed in the first bullet point. Any clues you can get will help you to understand the recording and identify the information needed for the answers. Have a go at predicting some of the answers in our practice question. There are eight answers to fill in. Pause the video to do this, then have a look at my predictions on the next slide. These are my predictions. Answer one will be a surname. Answer two, the name of the college. Answer three, a postcode made up of letters and numbers. Questions four and five, numbers of measurement. Answer six and seven will both be nouns. And answer eight will be numbers written as a price. Answers one and two will be proper nouns, so the first letter of each word must be a capital. Did you make the same predictions? If not, go back and have another look at the question. There are six types of vocabulary that can cause particular problems for students in the listening test, and some of them will definitely be present in form completion questions, as we've just seen. The six types are time, numbers, prices, dates, letters and addresses. You must be able to recognise them in speech and to write them correctly in your answers. I've written a whole lesson on this topic including eight listening exercises to help you recognise and learn these types of vocabulary. I put a link to it in the notes below this video. 
In all types of listening questions, you need to listen out for synonyms and paraphrasing. These are something else that you may be able to predict. If you have time before the recording starts, scan the question to identify key words or phrases that are likely to be replaced by synonyms and think of some that could be used. For example, the word box might be used instead of container in this question. As you're listening to the recording, remind yourself that you're not only listening for the exact words as are used in the question, but words and phrases that have the same meaning. We'll look at some synonyms that have been used in this question when we review the answers. In the recording, the examiners will try and catch you out with distractors. A distractor is a word or a phrase that changes or corrects the original piece of information given. So, you may be given an answer and then have it taken away again. Here are some sample sentences containing distractors. I've highlighted the relevant words. I really like the blue blouse, but I think I'll go for the red one, as it will match my skirt better. The package contains clothes, toys and five books. However, I'll take out the books if their weight makes shipping too expensive. I'd like to order two, please. No, wait a minute. I'll have three, so that I can give one to my mum as well as my sister. The use of but and however are particularly common distractors, but there are many different words and phrases that can be used to change or correct a piece of information, so be alert for them. The answers to form completion questions come in the same order in the recording as they're listed in the question, so you'll hear answer one first, then answer two, and so on. This makes it easier to pick out the answers than if they were in a random order. My final tip is to never leave a blank space on the answer sheet. If you miss an answer, take an educated guess. This gives you at least some chance of getting it right. Don't stress about a missed answer or it will affect your ability to answer the next set of questions. Just make your choice and move on. It's now time to practice using this strategy on our sample question. Here it is again. Pause the video, listen to the recording and identify the answers. Write them down so that you can check later. When you've completed this practice activity, continue the video. I go through the answers next. To hear the recording, click the link in the notes below this video titled Package Shipment Recording. How did you get on? Here are the correct answers. The words in brackets are optional. They're correct but not necessary. Pause the video while you check these answers against your own. Then we'll go through them one at a time. Answer 1 is a surname, Mkeri. Here's the section of dialogue this answer appears in. Can I take your name? It's Jacob Mkeri. Can you spell your surname, please? Yes, it's M-K-E-R-E. -E. It's common in the IELTS listening test to hear names spelt out. This is to test your knowledge of the different letter sounds so make sure that you know them. Pay particular attention to letters that sound similar when they're spoken. For example, letters with the E sound. B, E, D, G, P, T, V. Letters with an A sound. A, J, K. M and N also sound very similar. Answer two is the name of the college which is Westall. Here's a section of dialogue it appears in. And where would you like the box picked up from? From college, if possible. Yes, of course. I'll take down the address now. It's Westall College. Is that W-E-S-T-A-L-L? -L? The answer is again spelt out and synonyms have also been used. On the form, you're required to fill in the address the package is to be collected from. In the recording, the customer is asked, and where would you like the box picked up from? In the dialogue, the company agent refers to the package as a box, 
but in diagram it's labelled as a container. Answer 3 is a postcode, BS89PU. So there are more letters to listen out for and also numbers. For form completion questions, you need to understand how addresses are written. British and Australian addresses are the most likely formats to be used, although you could get a US address. Here are examples of all three. Pause the video if you want to spend a few minutes studying them. You must use capital letters for the letters in a postcode. Also make sure that you can spell common words such as road, street and avenue. Answer 4 is 0.75 metres, but any of these three variables are acceptable. 0.75 metres, 3 quarters of a metre or 75 centimetres. They've tried to catch you out by changing the form of some key words for this answer and the next one from the adjective form to the noun form. Long has been used instead of length. Wide has been used instead of width. High and deep have been used instead of height and depth. It's a good idea to learn the different ways to write some common proportions, for example, a quarter, a half and three quarters. These will be useful in several parts of your IELTS test. Answer 5 is 0.5 metres high or deep, and any of these four variations are acceptable. 0.5 metres, a half metre written in words or symbol, 50 centimetres. We've already talked about the measurement vocabulary being changed from the adjective form to the noun form, and this is the case here too. Answers 6 and 7 are the items in the package. Here's the section of dialogue they appear in. Can you tell me, you know, very generally, what will be in the box? Yes, there's mostly clothes. OK. And some books. OK, good. Um, anything else? Yes, there's also some toys. Clothing is already on the form. So the two answers are books and toys. They can be written in either order. Did you spot the synonym used? The word contents appears on the form, but the agent says in the box, which means the same thing. Answer 8 is 1,700. Here's a section of dialogue it appears in. OK, what is the total value, do you think, of the contents? Well, the main costs are the clothes and the books. They'll be about 1,500, but then the toys are about another 200, so I'd put down 1,700. Again, a synonym has been used. Cost for value. Recordings often include discussion of the cost or price of things. You're most likely to hear the price expressed as dollars, pounds or euros. Learn their symbols and know how to write the amounts. If you got any of the answers wrong, listen to the recording again and see if you can pick them out now that you're more familiar with the text. I hope you found this lesson helpful. Now practice using this strategy with other form completion questions from past papers. It's only with practice that your skills will improve and you'll get the score you need in your IELTS listening test. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.